The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports! Well, I have to admit, when I heard Aaron Rodgers was leaving, I was actually disappointed because I wanted the Bears to defeat Aaron Rodgers as a Packer well, once, once once lately. It's been nine times, including one Jordan Love, so eight times in a row of owning the stadium. I, I like that that victory over the best. That's what I wanted. And he leaves and goes to the Jets, and it looks like it's a great deal. Obviously, massive amounts of money. Picks traded to the Packers. Packers look good in that deal, actually, especially now. And then what happens last night? It's the debut. It's majestic. Aaron Rodgers runs onto the field with an American flag on Monday Night Football on September 11th. The crowd was deafening. And the game starts. And four plays in of this new era of Jets football. The only thing they need is a quarterback. They have everything else to win a Super Bowl. The defense and the weapons and the coaching. And New York will finally get a Super Bowl. Four plays in. Four plays in. This happens. So now Rodgers sits down. A loss of 10 on the play. And hopefully the Jets are thinking that's the only loss on that play. Didn't need that joke. Look here at the very end. And it's hard to, hard to see. Of course, he, he had the, the calf issue in training camp. But here's a little better look as far as what might have happened for him to go back down to the ground. So it was very uneventful on the call because it didn't look like that big of a hit. But then you looked up on and Twitter. It was kind of crazy. It's, like, yeah. it's such a big thing, and it just sounds so mundane. Because, he, yeah, and he kind of got up to, okay, my ankle hurts. I sat down on the field. But what it turns out when you look at a lot of very specific zoomed-in video that looks like he t- ruptured his Achilles. Yes, yeah, so a, a pop in his Achilles area that, that normally signals very bad news for an athlete. But, yeah, the whole thing was bizarre. I mean, he gets hit, he stands back up, and then – he sits down sort of like almost crisscross applesauce in the field, and I just assumed it was Aaron Rodgers being a weirdo. Maybe this was some, you know, something he learned in his darkness retreat over the season. And then he walks off the field, and he gets carted off, and we never see him again. Nope, and we might not ever see him oh again. Oh, God. Uh, because that's a, that's a year recovery injury minimum, and he's 39 years old. This is why. This is why every Sunday, Thursday, and Monday, this is why we dedicate our time to this league. This is Unbelievable. Right, I Kenzie? couldn't believe it. Could you, you could, couldn't believe that he got injured during I, football? No, I, to be clear, I'm not celebrating it. It's just you it have, says unbelievable that he got hit in football. No, and, and got hurt. Yeah, got but hurt. he's he's out now. All this pomp and circumstance, all these time, all this time dedicated to Jets previews. What are they going to do? Are they going to be good? Are they going to be bad? It is all worthless now. He is done for the year, likely. Now, and it's why this league remains undefeated. Now I've been saying this about the sports broadcasting world for quite a while. And it's kind of like, let's not deal with hypotheticals. Let's just talk about it when it gets here. Let's not talk about the Super Bowl because only one game happened and nobody ever listens to me. And look, look at all their wasted time and energy. Wait, wait, Bet wait. they didn't see this coming. So you don't want us to have a sports cast here? No, but we talk about things that happened. We get a little bit sometimes. We're, we... we're not doing a bunch of predictions. Okay, but let me put it this way then. Hmm. You don't want any shows on TV. You just want the games. No, that's not what I said. Not what she said, Brian. Well, it's kind of that because those shows wouldn't exist if they didn't talk about like. That's not true. Should should the Cowboys go ahead with Dak Prescott or move forward? Then they talk about it for four hours. And I enjoy some of that stuff. I really do. I hate to say it. I I think overall like analysis of teams and stuff is fine. I think talking about Aaron Rodgers and what he's going to be able to do for the Jets for I don't know how long. Oh, a long time. Yeah, like seriously. You don't like talking about a game that's happening in February when we're in October. That's what I'm saying. September, yes. Let's like, let's, you know what I mean? Let's do some like circumstantial evidence. How about we just wait till things happen and exist? I love previews. (laughs) I love talking about things that might happen. I love previews too, which is clips of actual things that are to come. Okay, so this is just hypothetical. Well, listen. There is a lot of BS out there, and there was tons. You're right on this. This was going to to change the face of the organization, and now New York fans, the Jets fans, they get just ripped again. I mean, uh, it did change the face. Everyone's now frowning. They're frowning? <laughs> I mean, I think, Michael, sad face. I think Michael Scott said it best in the office. It's like if Michael Phelps came out of retirement, jumped in the pool, belly flopped, and drowned. <laughs> Holy cow. Not making fun of the injury, but pretty accurate on what it is. That is uh, that's funny. And and then the Jets end up winning last night in overtime. 
Somehow they win the game. That game was phenomenal. I mean, the Jets went on a punt return. It's just everything about Could the game. Could you imagine that happening and you still win? Unbelievable. We didn't even win, and we had no major injuries. Doesn't that really show the state of the Bears at this point? That's good, dude. That's, that's, that's <laughs> pathetic. And by the way, Justin Fields did apologize to the fans yesterday. It was a very Justin Fieldsy. Look, I like him, but his press conferences are always kind of like he's just very nonchalant, going through the cliches to get through it where he said he's sorry to the fans, sorry to the organization, but we're going to get better. I like, personally, what cornerback Jalen Johnson said after the game, which I don't have the audio, sadly, but he goes, this is bull's ass. <laughs> he goes, we want to come out here. We want to play at a high level. Not doing that isn't okay. That's what I want to hear a player say. He, you know, saying it's bull crap uh, because he's being real. He's being honest. He's feeling like we all feel. I'm not saying any any of the statements are different. One guy's just nicer about it and being cliche and and pandering. Have you seen the highlight montage of what Chase Claypool did or didn't do, rather, on Sunday? I did not. So this is a case, uh, Kenzie, this is something probably it's a waste of time in your eyes on this, but it's something that, like, nerds like me and Case will do. Well, I think it's relevant to the Bears fans that there's highlights going around of Chase Claypool openly not blocking receivers, or, or, I'm sorry, not blocking defenders, dropping passes, etc., completely loafed it on Sunday and it's hard to win games when you have a wide receiver your your second wide receiver on the depth chart actively not playing well yeah also a big guy who's supposed to block yeah he's a big guy there you go well yeah there's the Bears there's the Packers <laughs> there's the Jets there's everything there for you Aaron Rodgers most likely out for the year uh there you go what's not bad Jordan Love still healthy Jordan Love's healthy unbelievable yeah <laughs> and to your point wins the game Wins the game against the Bears. Unbelievable. And somehow the Jets won. So the Cubs beat the Rockies 5-4 when it was watching Monday Night Football last night. And how about this? A 466-foot home run in the fifth inning, the longest of his career it is Christopher Morell. There's a drive into left center field. This ball's got a chance. Get out the tape measure for Chris Morell. <laughs> what a weird thing to say. <laughs> Just enjoy the, just the home run. Uh, really nice, though. Also, I feel like guys like to say that. Like, yeah, I forgot the tape measure for me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> Pete Crow Armstrong made his debut. Not a serial killer. Three names always are serial killers. You know what I mean? Like, if you've heard Pete Jeffrey Crow Dahmer. There's a bunch. Uh, John Wayne Gacy. There's a whole bunch I could do. Is there another three-name serial killer? Or are you go. only thinking of John Wayne Gacy? No, go. Listen, there's a bunch. No. Uh, Give me another one. Okay, I don't have time to do this in the middle of sports cast. Well, uh, if there was a bunch, you would probably know more than just John Wayne Gacy. Okay, how about this? Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> well, not a serial killer, but boy, did he have a good shot. Uh, John Wilkes Booth. Ted Bundy. <laughs> okay, they have middle names, though. Okay, John Wayne Gacy. Everybody has a middle name. <laughs> uh, Mark David Chapman, but they always say it with the three names. Doesn't Pete Crow Armstrong? Richard help? Ramirez. Richard Juan Ramirez. I'm not sure that's his middle name. I'm just oh. taking a guess on that. Oh, jeez. Anyway, Pete Grew Armstrong made his debut and from AAA Iowa, the 12th best prospect at MLB. And former Cub Chris Bryant, because they were playing the Rockies, gave him a cute little smile when he got on the field there. Said, hey, welcome to the league, buddy. And he pinch ran and super, super big prospect for the Cubs, bringing him up here with only a few weeks left in the season is a good sign to help out, of course, in the playoff push and the wild card and everything. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think the more I think more serial killers have two names than three. <laughs> I'm only seeing three people on here with three names. There's a lot of people. I just gave you a bunch. I mean, there were serial killers. There's some are John killers. Wayne Gacy. Yeah. And what was the other one you said? Lee Harvey Oswald. Not a serial killer. Mark David Chapman. He shot Lennon, right? Yes, he did. Not, not a, serial a serial killer. killer. Just a marksman. Um. Well, like you're just doing people who have owned guns. That yes. doesn't count. John Wilkes Booth killed Lincoln. That's not a serial killer. I know, but I mean, he, he would have killed more if they didn't catch Honestly, up with him. you have a better <laughs> argument for assassin at this point. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> maybe Pico, he's an assassin. Pete Crow Armstrong would make a great name as an assassin. There you go. I'll give you this one Jack the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> the Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Before we move forward with Clash with Kenzie, we were just talking about. The new Cub brought up Pete Crow Armstrong. I made a comment saying it sounds like a serial killer because they have three names. Maybe I made a mistake. The two uh, assassins have three names. And I mentioned Lee Harvey Oswald. But my brother, Steve, is on his way to the airport. And he's a historian and said, well, he killed Kennedy, but he also killed a police officer. Still doesn't count. Three or more are serial killer. Is that right? Oh, it is? Okay. Okay. John Wilkes Booth killed Lincoln, but he also killed two Army soldiers when he did that. Well, I get war? <laughs> 
Yeah, it was. It was. So all veterans. Yeah, you gotta count. You count your kills. You count your body count. If you that be a serial is killer, not, that is not and the same. You thing. cannot dispute that one. Do not dispute being that one. Being at war is not the same as being a serial killer. Mm-hmm. He still has the bodies on his on his name. That he's not listed on SerialKiller.com. <laughs> you on serial killer? <laughs> He's not here. All right. Well, I, I think Pete Crow Armstrong is going to be a nice player for the Cubs anyway. Good guy. 312 591 8300. Call now and clash with Kenzie. Call in a trivia contest, and you will get yourself a prize pack, a Brian and Kenzie prize pack if you beat her. 312 591 8300. Call now to compete. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. And a Brian and Kenzie prize pack on the line in trivia. And Matt in Indiana is going for it. Matt, ahoy. Tell us something really quick about yourself. Ahoy, you guys. A uh, longtime listener. Uh, new caller trying to get in on some of these uh, events. But, you know, don't always get selected. <laughs> Right, yes. Yeah, so, so new caller overall to Q101. Have you ever called before or just first time getting through? What's the deal? Uh, I've called before on some of the uh, the uh, the, the sound contests that you guys uh, have done. But never get through. So how does it feel to be on the radio? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> pretty cool, right? It's everything he's imagined. Right? <laughs> All right. Well, just don't panic and relax. Remember, first one, the five wins. Listen carefully. If Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point. She can do the same with you. Call heads or tails on the count of three. One, two, three. Call it. Tails. Tails. Ah, Kenzie finally wins a coin toss. Oh, really? Like Holy in three crap. weeks. It is heads. I guess your radio experience is not going very well. Eh, not a good start, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kenzie, are you ready? Sure. Uh, what fast food chain was founded by Glenn Bell in 1962? I'm going to assume Taco Bell. Taco Bell's right. All right. Trick question, kind of. Do I not get really. a thing? Uh, it's- well, I oh. hit it. Brian turned it down. Yeah. I didn't oh. want to give her a ding for that one. There you go. Okay. Why? I got it right. I know. But... Your trivia question. I don't come up with them. <laughs> if you hate it, don't ask it. Hey, Matt. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. How long is an NBA shot clock? Uh, 24 seconds. 24 seconds is right. Matt is on the board. Ooh, one, one. Lucky number. Because mm. my birthday. Kenzie. Yeah. Who was the voice of the donkey in Shrek? Um, it was, um, Ooh. it was Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is right. Yes. Good Ooh. job. Oh, almost got it confused with the zebra in Madagascar. I had to break it down for a second. Who does that? Chris Rock. Oh, okay. I needed a second. <laughs> Two to one? Yes, and back to Matt. Okay, Matt, are you ready? Yes, sir. Matt, what is a male goose called? A gander. Wow, good job. Uh, Kenzie, in what TV show... What TV show takes place in Pawnee, Indiana? Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec is definitely that show. Uh, Matt, in which decade was the Hindenburg disaster? Oh. Uh, That's a decade? In the, uh, What'd you say? The 30s? The 30s is right. Good right. job. Holy I was going to say 70s. <laughs> You're in the 70s? I don't know. <laughs> I don't live in Hindenburg. <laughs> Of my business. God, I wish I asked that question oh. to you first. Oh my goodness. Ooh, sounds... Where's Hindenburg at? Germany? Mm hmm. All right, Brian. Three to three back to Kenzie. Big Germany injury. No and... point for that. Why? <laughs> uh, it's back to Kenzie? Yes. Uh, Kenzie, name one of the four kids between Kim Kardashian and the man we mentioned last hour, Kanye West. Great Chicagoan. Uh, Northwest. Northwest yep. is right. Yeah, I know. Also, Psalm Saint in Chicago. Wow. If you don't like that one. I don't like that one, but I'm going to give it to you. No, I'm kidding. That's great. You what? never impress with my answers. You go, <laughs> wow, you got gander right? And then you like you treat me like a pile of crap. Every time I go <laughs> right. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so biased. I'll do better. I'll uh, do better and fine. appreciate it. Ask you. the next question. Just move on. Uh, let's see. It's going to Matt. It's four to three. It's back to Matt. Uh, Matt, how, right. how many keys are on a standard piano? Oh, my. Uh, Three. Fifty? Fifty's not right. <laughs> Kenzie, do you know? I'm going to say 72. 72 is a good guess. <laughs> there was 88 on a piano. 88 keys. What's one even close? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, three to four? Yes, three to four back to Kenzie. She can win with a correct answer. Oh, no. Uh, Ask me about my piano again. <laughs> <laughs> Kenzie. I bet I'll get it right this time. Kenzie, the VMAs are tonight on MTV. Who wore a dress made out of meat in 2010? Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga did win that. And there you go. Kenzie, I'm so proud of you. You did so well there. Oh, can it. Taking the victory. You, <laughs> just shut up. You won the coin toss. It's just a wonderful experience. No, see, you don't even mean it, so it's not worth it. I do. You don't that's, mean it. That's the problem. Everything I say, I can't win. So if I really showed excitement, you'd say, like, oh, shut up. And then if I say, you know, man. No, because like, we can tell your excitement's not real. Well, how can you tell it's when like it is real? It's flaccid excitement. It's flaccid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fake. It's hanging. It's just fake. Um, Anywho, you know what I want to do. I know what you want to do. What? What? Finish my sentence. You want to give Matt the prize because it's his I first do, time on the radio. It's first time on the radio. It's the first time on there. So, Matt, you do get a prize pack, buddy. Well, thanks, Kenzie. You're welcome. I, I was, care about you, Matt. I said it, though, too. See, I said... No, you just finished my sentence. Right. Thank you, Brian. Thank no, you. forget Brian. That's a flash of that answer he gave there at the end. <laughs> Thank you, Brian, too. Congratulations, man. The Q101 Morning Cruise Clash with Kenzie. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie, where losers win. That's a new statement. Oh, that's not nice. So you can call our listeners losers. You're disgusting. They lost in a competition. You're disgusting. Are you a winner if you lose in a competition? What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Everybody can be a winner in 25 minutes. 8 a.m. Riot Fest tickets. Three day passes for the event starting this Friday. 8 a.m. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101, and 20 minutes away, 8 a.m. is your chance at Riot Fest tickets. Three day passes. We're three days from the event Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Foo Fighters, Turnstile on Friday night. Uh, you've got the Queens of the Stone Age, Duck Cab for Cutie, and the Postal Service on Saturday night. The Cure and Mars Volta on Sunday night, plus 90 other bands. It's the best festival in the world, without question. And 8 a.m. is your chance to get there with Brian and Kenzie. Yesterday around this time, Talked a little bit about Kenzie going to the Bye Bye Baby in Crystal Lake, thinking it was open, and it wasn't. In fact, it's closed, and the shades were down, and, you know and it was what? empty. And... I want to address something. I got oh. a couple very annoying social media comments because they posted the picture. Big that is surprise. Sh- shocking, by the way. Yeah, big surprise. Yeah, very... a big shot. Right? Big shot with their cat profile picture. Always <laughs> some ass. Okay, anyways. So, <laughs> one day, like, you know, Google works. I-, I used Google. It didn't work. It said it was open, first of all. That so happens a lot, it, by the way. That happens sometimes. What's wrong? And someone's like, um, they announced that Bye Bye Baby was closing. I'm aware. But if you know anything about franchises, you can have a corporate franchise. You can also buy independently owned stores. So I thought, let me Google and see if there's any independently owned Bye Bye Babies that didn't have to close with the corporate overhaul. Okay? So maybe I maybe I do know some things and you don't, Mr. Cat. Okay? Was it a cat that said this to you? Yeah, it was a stupid cat profile picture. <laughs> Had enough. Had enough of you whiskers. <sighs> oh, man. God. Uh, however, they were proven correct when you went there and the place was closed. But well, obviously, it wasn't independently owned. <laughs> it wasn't but that ro- does happen. These rogue pirates that keep a franchise open. There's one of those in my neighborhood, actually. So to your point, you can look this up. A bye bye baby? No, there's a sport oh. there's a sports authority. Oh, big it's, whoop. <laughs> no, this is very important to me. I remember this the eight story sports authority at LaSalle in Ontario back in the day, when you would go in there and you had to take an elevator floor to floor, which sucked because it took forever to get up because you wait for that elevator. Everybody's trying to get up to like the floor with the Jordans on it. Right. And also I used to go in there and never buy anything half the time. But it was just fun to go floor to floor in that sports authority. And there's no more sports authorities, except there are rogue pirates like the one that you're talking about, the Bye Bye Baby, that might be owned individually. Yeah, it's probably owned independently. There's a tiny store on Ashland right by Irving Park by Lakeview High School. It's a sports authority. Now, I don't know if they just stole the name when it went under and they're just using it illegally, but it's the same font and everything. I haven't gone in that store. No, it's I- probably independently owned. That happens a lot. When I worked at Famous Dave's, that happened where people would bring in like coupons and stuff, and I'm like, we can't, uh, we can't take this. This is for a very specific store. Yeah. Like, well, why the hell not? I'm never coming to any of the famous Davis again. I'm like, you don't understand. This is, <laughs> someone else owns this. <laughs> I they, can't. Had a, they had a rant ready for their coupons. Oh, they were so <laughs> upset. I'm like, this is, this has nothing to do with us. The pig's yeah. different. Like, they went a different direction. But you they don't do, own this. You don't do like some of those companies that say like, we'll honor the.
the competitors' coupons or whatever, or even though they weren't really a competitor, but it was a corporate I didn't store. I have that much sold. power, Brian. I was wearing a pig name tag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. I don't know. I thought you sounded like you worked there a while. I thought you worked way up the ladder a little bit. Not really. That's just, too bad. I was just waitress through and through. That's a shame. Well, uh, Case said something the other day, too. We were we needed some piece of equipment. And Case said, well, zip over to H.H. H. Greg. <laughs> I think those closed like 10 years ago. I don't even know what that is. It was an electronic store, like Best Buy. H.H. H. Greg? Yeah, yeah. Sounds that, like a serial killer, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're in jail now. H.H. <laughs> H. Greg don't exist anymore That's because of that. That's horrible. Uh, what was it again? H.H. H. Greg. But what What did it sell? Uh, like, like Best Buy. It's a horrible name for an electronic store. It was I don't even great know what it, you've store, told though. me three times. Like, yeah, it's not sinking in. It sounds like a sounds like they sell boat and boat accessories. It was also great with two G's, I believe. It was like two G's at the end. Yeah. That's so unnecessary. Well, my bro- my oldest brother spells he it that it way. He says it like Tony the Tiger, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> like Popeye. Uh, now I believe H H Greg still exists online. Case if you want to shop online. I'm looking for a new TV. Yeah, I think they specialize more. Why? In home. Why is that what popped in your head? I need a TV. Let me go to H H Greg. That's what we were talking about a few days ago. That's how it came up. Was somebody was talking about a TV for I think for our area at Riot Fest. And I thought, oh, well, pop over to H.H. H. Greg and go get one. And then I realized it wasn't 2006 anymore. Yeah, actually, they survived all the way to 2017 when they filed for bankruptcy because Case didn't go there enough. Hell of a run, though. Good run. A good run from uh, 1955 to 2017. H.H. H. Greg, pour one out today. We'll get one out for them. Never forget. <laughs> what is a store that you wish would come back? Check in with us at 312-591-8300. Like, that one store to come back that you had so much joy at. And also, did it? a lot of times those stores did it better than the newer stores. I, I love. I was speaking of H.H. H. Greg, like Circuit City. I love Circuit City. They were they, that one, oh, way better name for an electronic store. Circuit City. I can remember <laughs> what they sell. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie, as we're about nine minutes away from Riot Fest tickets, three day passes at 8 a.m. And so stick around, because you're going to want to be there. We're going to be there. It's going to be amazing. So talking about stores you wish would come back, as Kenzie started this yesterday when she went to Bye Bye Baby and Crystal Lake, and they're all gone except for that one, and then apparently that one's gone too. No uh, rogue pirates running that one. It said on the Google, it didn't assume that it, was, the Google. that it was independently owned and it wasn't one of the permanently closed ones. And that turned out to not be true, Brian. <laughs> well, you got a nice journey from Elgin to Crystal Lake and back. I honestly was shocked. My husband was such a good sport because we did that, and the Cubs had an important game, and the Bears were on. Not a good Sunday shopping spree. And we went out to a closed store, so it wasn't even successful. And he was very nice about it. And I was, I'm like, oh, he's gonna like, he's gonna lose his mind when we yeah. get in the car. This is not gonna be a good. Exa-. And he was great. I was like, oh. I always try to make that into some other kind of thing. Like, well, we can do this now that we're over here. I try to find some <laughs> local food place. You know, I know there was a Buffalo Wild Wings over there. Some local food place? <laughs> yeah, that. Crystal Lake's one and only Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Everyone knows about Not it. Not many people know. That was the first one. <laughs> so we're asking you about stores you wish would come back. A lot of people checking in on, like, two biggest ones, Radio Shack and Toys R Us. Oh, the Toys R Us. It's so overwhelming how many people said that. Or they were listing other toy stores. Toy stores have been the number one Texan. And it is true. It was so fun. I don't know if you remember this, Brian. But when I was young, but like 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 young young, way back in the day, um, wasn't that long ago? <laughs> um, I remember kids got to register at Toys R Us, so you'd get the little scanning gun. Oh my! I did not. Okay. And you got to go around to make your like your holiday list, your Christmas list, your birthday list, things like that. And my mom would get so mad because you'd just be like, beep beep beep, and she's like, you had eight hundred yeah. items because you're just so excited to do it. it just went down but, the aisles. But imagine that as a kid, you're going to register for your birthday list. Your those were experiences versus let me scroll online. It yeah. was it was a whole evening. Like, okay, we're gonna take all the kids to Toys R Us. They're all gonna register for their Christmas list, and we'll go get dinner. It was go pick up a movie at a video store. It was a whole night. Yeah. Now you sit at your house, you scroll, you select a movie on your TV. You don't go do anything, and you, and you swipe for the gifts i like would go on amazon yes buy buy no. listen going to the mall used to rock i, I know it doesn't anymore i know it, I, I still go to the mall and i get a little bit of that retro nostalgic feeling when i see like a spencer's i think spencer's is still around i haven't been to a mall in a while I think apparently spencer's are still around there's probably less of them yeah because the malls aren't doing superb no they're not doing too well uh nikki's checking in from st john uh nikki ahoy 
Ahoy. What store do you want back? Only the greatest store in the mall, Wet Seal. Oh, God. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, it's oh, got to come back. That was my club and outfit store. Yeah. I'm keeping it alive. I pass it all on to my 15-year-old daughter and her friends. Oh, I bet they look a little feisty. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? You pause there a little, a little bit. Style, a little, a little, mm, <laughs> something, something. Wait, you kept all your Wet Seal clothes until you had a kid at 15 now and you're passing them on to her? Passing them on to her and her friends. Mm. Iconic. You're that. You're not like a regular mom. You're a cool mom. <laughs> <laughs> and they want them though too. I'm not judging because I don't know what the wet seal clothes looked like exactly because I didn't shop there. That wasn't my. That wasn't my thing. That was for the ladies, right? Yes. The way the style's changing, it's all coming back. That's true. The, the 80s are back. I'm so or 90s. I'm so happy. Baggy jeans are coming back. I want to go back because that way I can be just you know. Because all jeans are baggy on you because you're the, you're the assless host. I'm, I'm assless, <laughs> and I also buy the size bigger than I want to like be able to sit down and not like have any pinch in me, my belt to hit in my stomach. I don't want that. You don't want any pinch. I need <laughs> the assless host. The assless. <laughs> I really do. I just like back with a crack. There's nothing there. I know. You talk about it all the time. That's I why do, I'm bringing it up. I'm going to do squats. Sorry you're in this middle of this call here. Uh, I know. Nikki, She's I'm like, so- I just really want one seal to come back. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best. Yeah, you're it still was. there. She's still there. <laughs> the Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.